Let me set the stage. Spider-Man 2. Gently used GameCube controller. Child Cal. With the hand dexterity of a sickly 1930s toddler. And one Mysterio, who had absconded to the Statue of Liberty while leaving a floating breadcrumb trail of spooky weather balloons for me to follow. For days I swung on those balloons to try to reach Staten Island. And for days I fell. Child me's dick fingers couldn't hit the stupid misshapen GameCube controller buttons with enough finesse to make the 50 odd consecutive swings without fucking it up a single time. And after each failure, I landed in the water with a plunk, and my spider body contorted into a gnarled mess, and I emerged from the depths back on the Manhattan boardwalk, my progress erased, but the spider ever more haggard than at its previous outset. I'd hit the crunch. The crunch is that part or aspect of an otherwise great video game that runs so antithetical to the established texture of the experience that its inclusion leaves you baffled, frustrated, or otherwise stymied. I'm not talking just random difficulty spikes either. I'm talking a veritable jersey barrier the game hucked into the path of your naive enjoyment that you must now scale to continue on with your experience. Spider-Man's inane programming portions. Assassin's Creed Revelations turn as a tower defense game. Fucking time trials in God of War? The library? Literally any part of Pokemon that you need to have an HM mule to get through. All of these crunchy bits were envisioned as a means of blockading the player, either via progression, time, or simply variety. As well, each type of crunch comes with a level of defensibility that informs how you should react to their inclusion, ranging from appreciation all the way to stopping playing entirely. Let me hit you with a hypothetical. You've been sitting at home watching daytime television because Kelly and Ryan are your closest simulacrum to bona fide friendship in these trying times. But the yogurt commercials, they never end, perpetually ebbing and flowing taking their toll on you, and you've been reading headlines about probiotics and gut health and juice cleanses, and at last your resolve falters and you venture to King Supers or Safeway or Come and Go to the yogurt section. There you are inundated by the selection, and at the far end you land on Icelandic skier because it sounds exotic and you figure Scandinavians have got to be doing something right. When you get home, you peel back that yogurt cup and take a bite out of that creamy, creamy yogurt. Crunch. You're horrified. Yogurt isn't supposed to do that. You abhor the implication that gross, crunchy morsel made about your velvety treat. What type of crunch was it? How bad did it crunch? Are your teeth doing okay? All of these questions you need to ask yourself when you come across the crunch, because not all crunch is created the same. Here's four types of crunch you'll encounter in even the best video games, and how you should proceed when the crunch occurs. When the crunch is sundry. Sundry or the potpourri of glowing icons spread across an Assassin's Creed map is the side activity that maybe got too big for its britches and decided when it grew up it wanted to be a full-blown water level. It's the musical episode of Scrubs, the dialogue interludes on Good Kid Mad City, there because some exec or game dev thought vanilla, irrefutably the most superior of flavors, wasn't a good enough flavor to embody. Hence, Sundry. Ghost of Tsushima. Gorgeous, refined, and full of open-world trash disguised as activities to better your everyday gin. The Sundry, though plentiful, doesn't crunch particularly badly at the outset, which is a testament to visual design and the homogeny of the experience. But Sundry can grow crunchier and crunchier over time, a veritable olive loaf growing more and more stale the longer you put off that bread and wine night you've been planning. Bamboo Strikes, now these are the good stuff to crunch on. They're challenging, quickly completed, better gin skills, and also make you feel like you're bettering yourself as a player by accomplishing them. Sure, no one is ever going to switch so rapidly between Triangle and X that you heavy attack into the fucking sun, but they feed into your ever-evolving mastery of the controls by emphasizing precision, which totally tracks. Haikus, now these fucking suck. Where the bamboo strikes feel like an extension of normal gameplay, haiku shrines are anything but. Your camera moves slowly. The haikus themselves are lame, and the reward isn't tangible enough to not make me roll my eyes into the back of my skull whenever one of those golden birds leads me to a meditation on syllables and their arrangement. Though invariably a little crunchy, Sundry's range of crunchiness can land across the entire spectrum of quality, and therefore its defensibility all depends on how the added texture melds into the existing mechanics of the game. Hint. If you have a menu option to skip this part of your game, it's probably fucking dumb and should be excised post haste. I tired of Ghost of Tsushima's open world activities quickly, but maybe you've got a higher tolerance for that stuff. Is Sundry worth stopping playing over? I don't think so, but you're damn sure that stuff is getting skipped the ninth time I come across a hot tub where I expound on my feelings with my bare ass swinging in the breeze. Good Sundry gets a Nature Valley bar out of 10. Bad Sundry 
Kind bar out of 10. When the crunch is the gameplay. Here's where we're approaching danger territory. Gameplay. I don't mean sucky gameplay in general. I'm talking gameplay that's asked to do heavy lifting in situations where the mechanics and your grasp of your abilities are not up to snuff and the game itself falters as a result. Additionally, this variety of crunches every instance where the developers know the gameplay cannot handle the situation they want to throw, so they have a quick time cop out or intentionally limit your capabilities in the name of story or pizzazz. These are the cinematic set pieces that end with your character under a steel girder and you realize you've taken control and have to mash the A button to make your character do a thing. The prison level where you lose all your shit and the guards conveniently store it all in a nearby chest. Sure, you're gonna get through these parts, but is the game really made better by their inclusion? Getting strung up upside down in The Last of Us and having to stave off the barrage of zombies with just your pistol. Now, this is neither here nor there, but I absolutely despise Naughty Dog's gameplay. I just don't like it. Uncharted, Last of Us, I just don't find moving your character around or aiming your weapon fun or precise. I'm fucking Leon out here, but the zombies move way quicker, and aiming is this weird, too fast, too slow monstrosity that never feels satisfying. And I don't feel like mucking with the auto aim in the settings to get it right. So, when I'm upside down, limited on ammo, and disoriented, yeah, I'm gonna crunch on that, even if it's cinematic as fuck. Persona 5's mementos. Necessary to level your character since the game's metering out of battles and free days doesn't match your natural progression through the story, but also drab and dull and doubling down on monotonous gameplay. And why is my dang progress and time spent playing your game limited by some eternal grim reaper that wrecks my shit if I spend too much time in mementos? To the moon. Beautiful, wonderful story, but the parts where the game tries to be, you know, a game that people play, those parts are just terrible and are only there to break up the story and pad length. As you can see, crunch and gameplay isn't necessarily a deal breaker. It wasn't the reason I either finished or didn't finish any of those games, but it is a crunch all the same. This is what I'd classify the Mysterio weather balloons part of Spider-Man 2 under. While also being difficult, the game puts too much weight on its web swinging mechanic, and the mechanic's GameCube era imprecision cannot handle what is being asked of the player. Or maybe it's because I was a stupid uncoordinated child. Regardless, it crunched. I give Gameplay Crunch a raisin oatmeal cookie out of 10. Maybe it's your thing, but it sure as heck ain't mine. When the crunch is time. We're getting to fucking red alert level here. Time, your most precious of commodities. Here is where my threshold for a game's crunchy bullshit boils over the edge and the game teeters on the precipice of getting dumped into oblivion. You're gonna know right away what games I'm talking about, but Time Crunch is the weapon durability. Bloated, repetitive menus. The intentionally slowed pace that makes you feel like you're wading through a vat of fucking Vaseline to get anywhere or do anything. These are the games that, for one misguided reason or another, are more preoccupied with embodying the shittiest aspects of life instead of being a dang video game. And you know what? While also being one of the worst offenses, the good games that commit this cardinal sin are really freaking good. People love them. But damn, is it a crunch and a half when I come up against this stuff? Literally any text box in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Crafting being limited to one item at a time. Blathers, I love you, but shut the fuck up and let me drop off bugs in a more expeditious manner. Red Dead's mechanics are so at odds with one another and so demanding of your time that I'm surprised Rockstar didn't have a go to jail mechanic that makes you wait out the entirety of your incarceration in real time. Maintain your personal hygiene, but really no one gives a shit. Spam X to run like a fucking loon. Better read up on what buttons do what in a variety of situations so you don't hold up a fine lady by accident. Scratch X's into the tip of each bullet, but good luck fucking hitting anything. Hope Dutch doesn't realize I've got like five grand just chilling in my pockets and all this bullshit about making a new way for ourselves is so blissfully unaware that it makes me angry. Red Dead Redemption 2 is so preoccupied with crunching and crunching and crunching and crunching that its unfaltering realism impedes the player's desire to actually play the game. And yet, it's not even the worst offender. <sighs> Breath of the Wild. I loathe my weapons breaking. This isn't like Witcher 3 where you've got to maintain a sharp blade or some bullshit. These weapons literally break faster than they would in real life if I whacked them against some muddy hogs. And I get that their fragility makes you vary your playstyle and the Blood Moon resetting their locations are the real friends we made along the way, but you're intentionally making mini crunches in my playing the game each time I need to swap to some other leaf spear or whatever, when the last one broke after three frickin' swings. And the meal crafting, ugh. 
I don't want to keep a real life journal of what ingredients combine to make whatever keep me warmer potion I need to scale this damn mountain, and I sure as hell don't want to have to select each ingredient individually in a damn menu every dang time, then try to imprecisely drop them into a stupid pot to make my fourth rendition of fucking inedible garbage. These are the things that make me quit a game. I stopped playing all of these games, Animal Crossing Red Dead, and yes, even Breath of the Wild, because their insistence on wasting my time immersing me in a bubble bath of realness eventually outweighed my enjoyment of them. That is about as bad as it gets. Pickles out of ten. Maybe they're your thing, but I despise them. When the crunch is money. Yes, it gets even worse than wasting your time. The crunch of money. Now, there are very few good games in which this sin rears its head. Most of the best games stay out of their own way in this regard and maybe only have some purchasable cosmetic trash that I can safely ignore. No harm to my progression. But if your game has a season pass, or battle pass, or XP pass, or whatever that you intentionally use to gate portions of your game, oof. I'm, uh, not a fan. Not a fan. Assassin's Creed Odyssey with its XP boosters to help grind through the pouring, monotonous parts of the game. Just miss me with that. Money Crunch gets a fuck out of here out of 10. But let's go back to our yogurt analogy. You've hit a crunchy bit, and you're understandably reeling, but you pause and you think about it, and you realize that crunch, maybe it wasn't anything bad. Maybe it was just a bit of granola. See, the yogurt is produced in one of those factories that combines the yogurt and those granola packets into delectable parfaits. And through some production line finasco, the finasco, a piece of granola found its way into your delicious skier. See, the crunchy parts we encounter aren't necessarily a bad thing just because they crunch when we bite into them. Depending on what caused that crunch, the very fact that it elicited such a response from you should be commended or even celebrated. Life isn't some homogenous experience devoid of texture. In essence, our experience has been made richer and more varied by these crunchy elements' inclusion. Due to the resistance placed in the way of our own enjoyment of the game, we exhibit the meta-rising action so necessary to make a plot function. Games that exist solely in a place of inoffensiveness that don't ask anything of the player, that don't make us put any skin in the game? Well, who gives a fuck about those games? I'd much rather a game try to vary the gameplay loop unsuccessfully than not try at all. Maybe it worked and the game was made better for it, or maybe it didn't and it became such a stumbling block so as to cause me to bounce off and set it aside for a time. Maybe even forever. That's okay. I'm not gonna lie, I really like The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. <laughs> that sounds like a joke. But it's true. I know on paper it's not a very good movie, and it's got noted alleged Madonna kidnapper Sean Penn in one of the penultimate scenes, but I really freaking like it. <laughs> Maybe it's the sense of wonder about the world it possesses, or the bitchin' soundtrack, or the gorgeous locales that take me back to my trip to Iceland. I just like it. But there is a scene in Walter Mitty that makes me so angry and baffled that it almost ruins the entire movie for me. Here's how it goes. Walter Mitty is searching for Sean O'Connell, a brilliant photographer that has a photo print that is going to be used as the cover photo for the last issue of the magazine Walter works for. Walter has followed Sean O'Connell to a number of exotic, beautiful locales, and over the course of this hunt, Walter has gradually shed the daydream shell he previously wore. In Iceland, Walter is confronted with a winding downhill highway set against a picturesque landscape. He needs to get to the town at the bottom of this highway, and quickly. So what does he do? He knows how to skateboard, so when he sees a nearby Icelandic boy with a longboard, he trades a fucking Stretch Armstrong toy for the kid's longboard. And the kid agrees. Ugh. God, it's so fucking bad. It's so fucking bad. What tweenage kid would look at a Stretch Armstrong toy, a goofy toy from the 1970s, and say, yeah, I'll trade my bitchin' longboard for that. Urgh! Crunch. But you know what happens next? Because Walter Mitty now has a longboard, he can bomb this highway in what is the very best scene in the entire movie. Redemption. Under the right circumstances, the wake the crunch leaves us in propels the overall experience to heights it couldn't have reached previously without the crunch. At Disneyland, the sidewalks are tinted red, so by looking at them, the red-sensitive photoreceptors in our eyes are stimulated. Then, when we look at the green grass, the quick transition to the stimulation of our green photoreceptors enhances their stimulation and makes the grass appear to be the greenest green we ever did see. 
That is to say, even returning to stable, run-of-the-mill gameplay post-crunch enhances what would have otherwise been a static experience. The inclusion of the crunchy part irreversibly altered the texture of the game, and only you can determine if that was worth the encumbrance in the first place. Want to know how often I think about Spider-Man 2 on GameCube? Uh, it's not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but do I think about it more than I would have otherwise had it not contained this insanely crunchy part that so perplexed me as a child? Heck, I think I do. The crunch was woven so irreversibly into my experience with the game that its crunchiness became a part of the game itself, and the experience I remember. Yes, of course I was glad to be done with it, but afterwards, the game was ever so greener.